Wonderful. So thank you so much for joining us today with Unlimited's second series of Journey to Success. My name is Sim. I'm the content manager. Uh, would you please kick us off with a little introduction about you, who you are and your professional journey so far? I will indeed. My name is Shane Younger. I, uh, I will go through my professional journey. My current position is the head of finance and operations for Gucci. Um, and I specifically look after the what they call hard luxury, which are the watches and jewellery side of the business. And I take care of the UK and Northern Europe. I do have approximately 20 plus years in, let's say, the, the fashion side, mostly luxury, uh, but all sectors of the fashion industry um, from off price which is like the TK Maxx kind of business model to high street, like the French connection type thing. And to, and so mostly luxury. So um, various companies like Gucci, Stella McCartney, Christopher Kane. Um, yeah. So, so they would be the key ones. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's been a, so I started my career in, let's say 1996, I would say I was 24 at that point, just came back from India. And I'll go into that a bit more because I do, I'm a big advocate of recommending people take some time off when they finish their studies. Um, because I think one of the things that's helped me in my career and to do relatively well is broaden your horizons and, um, you know, meet people. And, uh, you know, we're very, it's very topical at the moment. I know with diversity, inclusion and, and, and a good grasp of things. But when this actually can, comes naturally through your pursuits of, being curious as a quality, for example, and, uh, you know, so broaden your horizons while you're a little younger, I think, and it gives you a real good platform because the the corporate world does reflect the outside world to, to a degree. And uh, the more, the, well, the, the better prepared you are on the outside world, I think is a big positive indicator on the, uh, on, in the corporate world as well. So um, I, I finished university and one thing, I noticed my peers were just, they were taking any job they, they could. Um, and that, that wasn't for me. I just thought, you know what, I'm not quite ready to step into, even call it the adult world just yet. So um, I decided to take, I didn't, I decided to take a year out. It wasn't planned to be a year. It was a few months, but I went to India. I'm not saying everyone should go on a, a big Indian tour or whatever, but uh but I wanted some time to reflect and, and think about what I really want to do. So I came back and I decided to further my degree to, to the professional qualification of, because I was debating, should I do a master's? Should I do something more vocational and direct? So I became a chartered accountant through the SEMA route um, and decided to uh, you know embark on my journey. And I was quite fortunate. My first job was in the record business, in the, in the music industry. And actually, I could work out that I was able to network really well and uh, have some impact. So it gave me a, uh, a little clue into something of what my strengths were. And, uh, you know, I'll go on to the, the, the point of, you know, essentially focus on what you're good at and your strengths. Uh, don't try and be the jack of all trades. You do it at the beginning to find out what you want, but then focus on what you were good at. And, and people, connections and getting people to work with me and et cetera, was a very, very positive thing. And I was only there for one year because I moved on because I I was promoted to a, a more well-rounded role. So I became a management accountant. Then I moved on to uh, Polygram Films, which became Universal Pictures. And I did a very sort of management accounting role. So very much month end, your bog standard sort of accounts, the disciplines and, and the financial reporting side of things. Uh, so a much broader role for two years. Again, similar dynamics in terms of the, the, the sectors of the industry, music, film, creative industries you know but i was the solid let's call it the solid finance guy who could you know, let's say flex or uh you know speak to these people because you you know it's not the case anymore but you used to have the accounting people who were sort of sort of nerdy and retiring twitching in the corner it doesn't really go like that so if you if you were able to make people understand um you, you know what your part is in the you know because the, the accounting and the finance people were the annoying people who were trying to you know maybe put, put obstacles in the way of them doing the creative things but once they kind of understand it, it's all one thing and, and uh you know it, it makes it a lot easier to buy into and, and this be became very prevalent in my next role and this was a big milestone in my career with french connection now 
French Connection, as most people will know, were a high street brand. But at the particular time I joined in 1999, they went through a real wave of growth with their acronym, the FCUK. So they played on a very sort of, you know, cheeky, naughty word. And then they, they grew like they were doubling every year. It was it was phenomenal growth or every two years. But it was uh, and this is where I really jumped up. I worked for the chairman, Stephen Marks, who owned it. And uh, I was put amongst all these creative people. And, and my role was to there was so much money going to waste. And when a company's doing well, what happens is people forget about what they're spending because they're riding the wave of success. However, if this doesn't carry on or if this this starts to go, you know, if this starts to deplete, you end up having all these costs to still pay. So my job essentially was to make sure that we were making good margin on, on the products, but also the designers, you know, they'd go with, let's say, 200 styles, but they would sample and develop a thousand. And this was wasting a lot of money. You, you, there's 800 styles you're not going with. So basically, I had to work out ways of, and this was this was a challenge of them buying into. Okay, develop 400, drop 50 percent. You're going with 200, and this and we, we we saved half a million on sampling pounds. You know, but it didn't affect their their life. It's just that they were free to they had free reign to be out of the business plan, if you like. So I was the one who married them into the business plan, and uh, you know, you don't start turning creative people or people in these who cannot activate lots of costs into accountants but you have to say to them okay instead of doing 50 fabrics you do 30, do 20 then they don't have to think about too much they just get the you know and you manage it that way so you have to work out you, know, you have to be genuine but you have to work out what works for people and i was there for almost five years through phenomenal growth absolutely loved it i was 27 in a very quite a senior position i was like the financial controller there and i was i had exposure to um chairman who owned it Stephen Marks and also worked for Nicole Fari because they were owned by the same person and that enabled me to travel the world as well so I was in India I was in Poland I was in Romania Turkey you know because we had offices all around and uh, I, I guess it was the first time in my career where I felt I'm a big boy now sort of thing you know um, I wasn't so much in the back the, the, the back seat making sure everything looked well and, and balanced this was influencing the business and it was the first time where I had to. I realized that people, it, it was the it was the dynamics with people and the connections with people that were not only a strength of mine, but but just an important thing to have, you know. And you know, when you become responsible for things, you're not so dependent. It's not you can't achieve the result on your own. And uh, and and I think a lot of my sporting um, endeavors, which I still have, but I mean, I was I I, I, I that helped as well. That, that there's the success of winning and taking part and enjoyment but actually you realize that, that that those team building kind of um it sounds a bit cliche but those working together to achieve something become very important you know and um yeah so i'd say that was the biggest milestone where there was real results i could see that i'd actually um put my head on the table so i was going to do so before it was just recording things and reporting things and you know i wasn't influencing anything this was the first role where i influenced an outcome had to report to the, the big guys um you know had to sort of make some in had to sort of use my intuition a little bit as well you, you you have to do that and again i think from my travels this was something that uh i don't know it, it, it's it's a thing that i would say the magic from my travels was the uh that ability to relate to people because in india for example it was very intuitive it wasn't so much like the western cognitive you know you know the same things you relate the same way it was very intuitive and you know you didn't even speak the same language so it awakened stuff but again it comes back to connection connecting with people and uh you know having that that platform that you want to uh you understand people will operate and and react differently to things so yeah it, that was a big big milestone a very successful company and uh i loved it it was probably to this day probably my favorite role ever you know I then moved on four and a half years, five years later to TK Maxx, who you probably would have heard about. Um, they were, they're a big off price. You know, they, they basically buy excess stock, put it in their stores, usually low cost stores, and they shift it through. And the, the appeal to customers are, it's replenished all the time. So you're always seeing something different in there. But they have a very slick supply chain because they have to, they operate on smaller margins. So they have to have everything really slick going through and uh, when if people are buying or if people if customers aren't buying 
then the buyers can't go out on the market and get you know it's a whole big supply chain thing where if if, if the demand isn't there you, you you can't go out and buy stuff but if the, if the shops are going empty you've got to get there and buy stuff so very reactive very slick wasn't really my thing the reason i went was to polish myself a little bit because it was a big company in the billions you know and uh it, it was good for me i think to go up and polish myself corporately because where i was at french connection was a bit i wouldn't call it maverick but it was very entrepreneurial let's say my cup of tea but um you don't want to become locked away a little bit in this entrepreneurial bubble where other companies may not find you attractive so very much a tactical strategic move even a sacrifice i would say um and then i was there for a good two years and then after that i had the opportunity at 33 years old to become a finance director which is a great title but it was for a very very small company like a startup i didn't have any children at the time had no commitments really had the had the um ability to you know to throw myself into it it was a lot of risk and stuff i mean it, it was a very tough role because it didn't really happen for the company and i was i ended up having to you know beg the bank for money and it was like army training and raise money for sh from shareholders so you know very uh revealing in terms of what i had to do but very much very different to the success stories i've been to they went under and then i was approached by at that point the gucci group which is called kering now they are a big player lvmh and kering are the, are the two big fashion let's say parent companies and an example of the brands under the group i work for are gucci Saint Laurent, alexander mcqueen brioni balenciaga stella mccartney at the time you know um so you know a, a very very high profile um brands and then i went into work at for stella mccartney as the worldwide financial controller again a, a company that went from 50 50 million to 250 million in five years very huge growth um all the things i've just explained to you like i did with french connection at higher level of responsibility looking after the creatives all the ones who drove cost again it was about getting people working with you and you know you're not becoming a hindrance to to how they work but them understanding the big plan and uh, after that i became the cfo the chief financial officer of a brand within the group called christopher kane who was a very neat still is a niche brand didn't quite happen i mean they were the new alexander mcqueen that was the that was the that was the aim anyway but very talented very niche and uh and very tough because it didn't quite get off the ground as it as it hoped to and uh I was there for almost five years as a uh, and, and ver a very important role not only just because of the title but when the chips are down and the the losses are there it's the finance guy who has to be is the main person you know who's controlling this so uh, i mean it was very enlightening to be again on the on the flip side of the coin of success of a brand that was struggling to really propel itself but very good and very revealing for my career as a cfo because you have to then you know you, you're on the ground fighting with the troops and uh trying to work out what the best way to manage the business is etc you know delivering results to the people who own caring you know about the disappointing results you know like minus millions you know and you keep you know you're waiting for it to change i loved it it was great it was there for five years and then i just thought you know i've done my bit here an opportunity came up in the group and it's where i am now so i am the head of uh, finance and operations for northern europe as i mentioned with Gucci category of watches and jewelry, which is, uh, you know, Gucci's a phenomenal company, um, you know, trebled in growth in the last five years, number one luxury brand. I, I don't have to explain Gucci to you, I'm sure, or anybody. I've been there for three and a half years now. Uh, huge challenges more culturally because we, um, we have a lot of people in the business that have been there for a while and it was more about getting becoming current and having you know the right organizational structure to grow because we've been growing very quickly so another let's say reason i think where my skills lie was was understanding how organizations should be structured to make them efficient motivate people to move on it's, it's interesting actually because you you sort of forget but then you uh you picture yourself back there thinking actually it's been quite a quite a, quite a illustrious journey and you know it's not plain sailing believe me it's uh it's about i'll always come back to these things it's about being being honest being courageous you can try and cut corners but you'll get caught out at the end i've seen it happen you even try it a few times early on in your career but i think you know to, to have credibility and 
respect. You need to be your own person and uh, and, and believe in what you're saying as well. You know, if you've got the desire and the interest and the and the pursuit, and, and keep keep your virtue. You know, keep keep honest, keep courageous, and uh, and and humility as well. They, they, people sense it. Uh, it's about you get far in life if people want to work with you, and it's like anything. Your entourage of friends, anything. If, if people want to work with you, this is why you'll get you'll get jobs. It's a lot to do with that. But um, yeah, I, I, I'll uh, I'll get onto it. But I think the esteem issue is something. I, I think you know it, it's it, it affects different people. But just keep injecting that belief, even in the times when you're feeling doubtful. You know. And uh, yeah, absolutely. And that sort of feeds into one of the reasons why we're doing this series, just because, like you said. I think a lot of the time people's confidence can be hindered by the fact that they think, oh, maybe I haven't come from the right socioeconomic background. Maybe I haven't had access to the right tools. But now the world has evolved in such a way that there are different avenues to enter the same career. Your pathway has been one way and it sounds phenomenal. And I can't even imagine how incredible your wardrobe must be, by the way, Shane. Like, seriously. <laughs> but I need to get rid of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've got too many things. I bought you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it's about highlighting the fact that organisations are open to supporting people, um, irrespective of creed, gender, age, uh, racial ethnicity, disability, whatever it may be. Um, so it's great to have someone like you on board. And um, that actually brings us on quite nicely to the next part, which is in your current role, could you please tell us what it was like to have like a day in the life of Shane Younger? head of finance and operations i mean it can be uh because of my role is is is, is fairly senior there, there's different elements to it obviously so there's got there's a strategic part where you know if we're, we're doing investments in a store or something so i'll have to put a you know i'll have to put something together that will make sense financially so that we have it we'll have a model and i will put, have to put in all the financial sales and these are more long-term things that could take you know anything from two to six months so there'll be things like that but the, the key thing I'd, I'd say with any business is even how you manage your inventory uh, we have a very demanding um pro a, a product that's very much in demand so we have to we have to ensure that what we are what our customers want and what we're backing because we're very much driven by um you know by what what is designed for us that we are able to to uh, anticipate what we need so this this is more of the operational side of things and that's where you have to have the real team skills to make sure everyone involved in that chain is on point and uh you know and if they're not on point then you just have to hold your hand up and just tell it like it is bad news is better than no news which will become worse you know and that's you, you do see you come across that a lot and so, yeah, I mostly deal with people on a daily basis. I have probably about 25 people indirectly reporting to me, but I have really three main three main forks into me, which is in the financial and operational side. And, uh, I, you know, you have I've designed a structure where communication flows very clearly through, if there's an issue at any point, it's really clearly communicated. So I will deal with people a lot on a typical day, two hours, three hours, two and a half hours of my day will be dealt with speaking to people who don't whether they report to me or not you know i'm very open in that sense um i also monitor everything what's going on so that could be on a monthly basis you know we, we, we close the month you know the financial side it could be on a quarterly basis it could be on a yearly basis and we have to project into the future where we think we're going to be and i monitor that on a on a let's see you could call it a bi-monthly basis and uh, you know, ensure that you report to HQ if anything is is different. Now, being in a, an industry that is very dynamic, like luxury fashion, opportunities come. So there could be a potential store that is or a space that's but very attractive. So we will have to say, oh, we want money for that because we're going to invest in. And then we have to do the deals with the, the customers, etc., and whatever happens in the property side of things. So it could be anything on a day to day basis, which I think is a great thing. It's very. Uh, interesting from that point of view but if you're someone who wants a uh, predictable life it possibly isn't the sector for you but um but it doesn't mean it's great i mean you more on the fashion side than i would say the watches and jewelry but you get the real diverse uh out there personalities which I, I i love as well don't get me wrong um but you have a lot of different personalities to deal with i'd say 
And um, yeah, so we, we just make sure once we set up how we want to run the business, that it's all working very well. But it can be working with external people as well, consultants. There's so, so many things going on in the world. Like we may have a building that has a 5G tower on it and you, you, you quickly understand you don't have many rights. They have a lot of rights, these kind of people. So my, my point is you need to engage with it, with specialists in areas that you know, you, you're know you not a specialist in. Don't be afraid to do it and never be afraid to ask for help. I mean, I think that's something that took me a while to, I was always someone who wanted to deal with it myself. I think it's very empowering to, uh, to be honest about, I mean, you don't have to pay your soul to everyone, but I mean, to be honest about your, you know, you don't have to be in control all the time. You don't have to be, have the, have the answers to everything. But I think if, and I think if you behave in a certain way and humility, it comes back to humility for me, the number one quality, you'll engage, people will engage and they'll sense you and you'll build better, you'll build better teams and you'll be build better businesses because for me it's not about it coming from top down it's about from coming from the it's about circuitry if people are happy to speak and the people that are on the ground or know that you know in the warehouse wherever they are understand things that can be improved you want them to have the confidence to feed it back not to feel there are blockages so if you create these circuits of dialogue and communication we all use communication in a very of course it's important but what do we mean by that but i mean if you create the flow where people are happy to express themselves, whatever, it leads to healthy, healthy everything, but certainly healthy organizations. And uh, I think that's where my, probably my forte is, is, is developing those areas of culture where it's, it's open and uh, people are not scared to express themselves. You know? Yeah, I think that's great. And I think that's really important in any industry, any team, any department to have that sort of open communication but considering with how much you deal with how many people you deal with how many stakeholders and throughout the fact that you said you've had around 20 years of experience working um within the fashion industry how do you actually stay on top of the evolution of commercial habits changing like the way people are choosing to shop and the world of finance and still doing your day job at the same time how do you stay ahead of everything I mean, I think it helps to have a curiosity and an interest in what's going on in the world anyway. I mean, I, I would read The Economist, for example, but I don't think you have to, you know, subscribe to certain things to make you better, but you just have to have your antennae pointed outwards. Um, but thank, luckily, with a group like, and this is why I, a big benefit for working in a group, that's that, especially that's doing well, is they're always thinking ahead of these things, and you have the benefits of one company in the umbrella, may be deployed across the whole of the companies, uh, but they're always continually investing in, it could be, you know, AI, you know, artificial intelligence, who knows what we're going to be like in five years. Um, the millennials were very much onto the online shopping, you know, I, I do it a lot. You got now the next, the generation after that, actually more into the experience of, um, of shopping. And I would also say stores now, and you'll see it on the high street now, become more like showrooms. I mean, if you go into a store, if I go into a store, I may like something. I may not buy it, but I might go home and buy it online, you know. So they're not just what they were back in the day where profit centers or you go there to buy stuff you do. But you may want to, you know, people are quite happy and comfortable shopping online. And we understand that as well. And that's why you make the returns and all these kind of things really easy because people don't, you know, especially with expensive things like what we do i mean you know when you're talking about jewelry if someone buys it online they have to be assured that there's going to be a no hassle return and uh it's all going to be done for them i mean the moment you have that all of that taken care of the experience is the experience or the hassle of returning stuff doesn't become such a block to to ordering stuff and i think we we understand the power of the uh the online the online world and my point, I suppose, is that as a, you know, if you're in a good company, they are generally investing in these forward thinking mechanisms and business activities, you know, and um, so, yeah, I would say I keep on top of it myself to answer your question. But, uh, you know, I'm surrounded in an environment that's progressive and empowering with imagination. And uh, and uh, yeah, we, we, we by virtue of what what market we're in, we have to be responsive and reactive to what's going on. We have to be very um, astute to a, a, an environment that can change very quickly. I mean, look, influencers can, you know, they have such a, an impact now on, um, on what people do. And 
I think back in the day, you may have celebrities where they're still out of degrees, you know, big influences, but it's not always the case. There's some really un there's underground influences that have huge followings that companies tap into now, you know, so the models are always changing and it's just being aware of what's going on, really. Keep your eyes open, keep, keep abreast of what's going on in the world, but also you never know what's going to reveal something to you. And one of the most inspiring things about having spoken to you so far genuinely is the fact that as well as being such an incredible incredible professional where you have a fantastic career you're very clearly you're very self-aware and you make the time to be aware of the world around you and i think that's something that a lot of people often let go by the wayside because we're all trying to get somewhere we're all trying to earn our money to pay our bills but i think you make such a wonderful impression that having that awareness and showcasing how that awareness can then feed into that career so maybe don't be so beelined into just get a degree and then do whatever qualification you need to and get into the job and then work your way up the ladder you're like no like take a step back because you'll learn something from the most odd thing you've mm -hmm. taken that time out to experience the world in a different way you probably built connections uh, you and I probably would never have met if you know you're, you're not out and about enjoying yourself outside of work as well like it's all those sorts of variations and I think that's really important because it clearly sounds like that's fed into your journey of success yeah yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm, I, I do think I'm fortunate that I grew up in a before the internet revolution I, I do feel as empowering and as informative as it is it's a it's a, it's a little bit of a hindrance of people being curious and and having coping mechanisms you know, and, and being it because you have, you know, resolving things with people like you can just go into this virtual world now and escape. And I, that that's what I feel can be quite negative and take you away from absorbing what's around you or, or even if you absorb what's around you with this virtual thing. I mean, you know, I'll start to sound like, uh, you know, maybe my grandparents did when they like you just don't, you know, maybe every generation does. But I, I do think there's something important about I mean, I wouldn't. I would never say don't get the qualifications. Put yourself in the right ballpark, you know, and yeah, get qualified in the things that you like and you're good at. But um, what's going to give you the the cherries on top is uh, how those qu those qualifications, those disciplines, they're they're your basis. But what's going to get you on is how you um, how they all come together, and that's by, by your sense of being. And uh, you know, I always go back to virtues, humility. Be courageous sometimes i'm not listen i'm by no mean am i the most courageous person or the most humble i like to think i'm humble but and i would give myself that quality but you know being courageous sometimes to speak up you know there's been times when i probably wish i had and i hadn't but what i think i've learned over the over the years of this there's nothing much you're not risking much if you're being true to yourself that's what i'd say and i just think the world will work in it um will work for you things will work out if you're being true to yourself uh, and i think if you're trying to and this is probably could be part of the generation that's you know like this the internet generation but surround yourself with positive people i mean on it's 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 harder to do when you're younger because there's a need for acceptance maybe more but um got get just get just get rid of the people who don't have positive in, influences on you i'm quite fortunate i'm an i'm an identical twin so that gives you also a sense of uh, reflection and a mirror. So you, your confidence never suffers too much because you've always got this almost sounding board that's kind of real, you know. But, uh, you know, I think with time, just surround yourself with the right people. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, – there's, there's, there's lots of influences. And I think there's a real – like I say, this – this wanting everything now and not wanting to work for it is a big issue in society generally, not just for personal development, but just in general, you know, you, you could easy to drift and if you, you, you blink your eyes and before you know it, it's like November and it's like, okay. And then it's 2025, you know, it goes so quick, get some goals and make sure stick to schedules. I, I'm terrible. Believe me, I'm, you're talking to someone who's had to really work on it. Cause I like to, I've got a very good memory and I really like, you know, that can be a bit of a hindrance sometimes because you don't want to organize yourself so much. And I've had to force myself into it. Let the schedule, let your plans stay longer term, short term, make them your friends. They don't have to be the prisons because they give you the, the chance to do the things you want to do. You know, if you if you get that sorted, you you start seeing the weekends become free. You haven't just, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it, oh, yeah, I'll save it. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, you've got work on Monday and you think, oh, I need to finish that. And Sunday, four hours later, you're trying to fit, you know, get yourself, get get some, dis you know, everyone's got their things to work on. But um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how the world's changed. I went to India in 1995. There was no internet. And you think how the world's changed in the last 25 years. You know, it's uh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. You are no way, uh, you're not alone anymore, if you like. But the flip side is that is it can make probably can make people feel isolated if they're not living up to the dream. This is the, this is the thing I think uh, where hopefully people evolve beyond it and uh, you know start doing a few. That's why I think when you travel and you connect with people, it starts giving you a bit more of an awakening inside and to worry so much about the outside. Don't let it shine from the insider, and it all comes from. But it all comes from these 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 internal things like belief and and, and you know hope and uh connection is every you know those, those kind of things you know and uh you know live on your terms as well as long as they don't affect don't don't afflict on other people live, live on your terms i mean that's one of the reasons i studied and i made sure i got my qualification and i because if i don't like something why i don't want to be somewhere i've got the choice to change it hell for me would be in a job where i am stuck and i can't get out because i don't have the means to i don't have the options that would be hell for me so you know do the things that are going to get, empower you. And, uh, yeah, I love that. that. I do love that. I think especially because success doesn't necessarily have to be determined by your job title. If for some people that may be satisfying and that's absolutely fine. But like you said, also having that option, having that sort of self-determination where you're committed to yourself, that can also be a form of success. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and yeah, if you don't, exactly. and if you don't have the self-determination, because we don't all flow on a, on a high level. You know, sometimes you have days where you're not motivated. That's why I say get systems on schedules, simple things. Just just get them in place. And and you know, one of the tricks I've done is I sort of I've got this alter ego that I call Jean, and he is so different to me. And if I'm ever feeling lower motivation or something, he's all these things, and I just fool myself into being him. And I, uh, you know, you 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 know, you 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 got to find ways to. To do things but time's important for me so and the older you get i think the more you appreciate how i don't know you for me the 20s and 30s just the they think they went quite slowly i mean your 40s just flies it's just gone uh especially late 30s to, to late 40s it's, it just goes but you know you start valuing your time and what you're doing there so it comes back to success as well as like you know you don't want to be i know people who have very good job titles who do nothing but work and do nothing but worry about work and uh, have poor relationships with their kids or you know, maybe the, not always the cause of divorce but they have other other issues that they pay for it in some other ways i don't want to get to you know later on in life and think god that was a was all that worth it i mean you know but like i say it comes about empower yourself live on your terms and uh you can only do that when you are in a position to do it and uh, absolutely um, so moving a little bit more towards our sort of um, uplifting side, um, could you share with us like a major challenge during your career that you think shaped you or added to your shaping, shall we say? And why was that one challenge so poignant? I think uh, something I touched upon when I first was exposed to having responsibility that, so it was my first job at French Connection with a man called Stephen Marks, who's incredibly inspiring, terrifying, but very, very bright. You know, very, uh, you know, real charisma about him. And uh, and all of this was my first role, I think, where I was, you know, like I said, influencing the business. I wasn't at the back end recording, reporting and stuff. And uh, I think that the moment I was able to, and I didn't think I, I didn't know if I'd do it, but I basically saved something like half a million pounds. It was just wastage, you know again that enabled me to think i can impact wow i can impact the business you know you you think about it but just by seeing something through and making people and working with people you can actually get some results you know that's a very positive example of when it was like wow things on me i can i can uh you know very uh proud of it i was i was i was super you know super i felt so rewarded internally you know but, you know, there are also negative aspects that can be quite empowering and poignant. I mean, like when I was, um, what is it, Christopher Kane as CFO. I mean, we were, 
the expectations were huge, like the new, the new Alexander McQueen, and um, and it didn't really happen. And it was hemorrhaging money; it wasn't making a lot of losses, and uh, it was really quite it was really quite disappointing. And for me to present this to the the key stakeholders in the in the group, you know, for for, for over four years, it was, it was quite. Um, disheartening at least what i could manage i did manage and then we did make a lot of good things you know when we control costs and we didn't have to we, we did we stopped investing in things in time so you know things could have been worse but um you know constantly giving the sort of bad news and uh but but knowing that you're endeavoring to minimize these things but i mean we got it back and you know the reality is i was quite new in the role and the control systems weren't there so on the positive sides it highlights where the issue was but it was really poignant for me that to just to double check stuff you know what i mean or to to, to be more to, to go steady and slow is better than fast fast and and then hopeful do you know what i mean and, uh, it's always i always because i'm quite mercurial in terms of i, I think fast and i want to i want to get it done fast but it's not always the way uh, especially when it, when it comes to finance check things you know i just um I just applied for a passport now, which has taken ages, and I almost submitted the wrong date. I, I make sure I build into this the this, this sort of checking and, and informing people because I did this in silo. Wanted actually, I remember trying to not to prove, but thinking I can do this on my own. Had I just spoke to someone who was in there, it wouldn't have happened. So bounce stuff off people, you know. Um, so I've had a lot of what I, that French Connection example. Also with the Stella McCartney, it grew at such a rate, and every time what I was predicting was coming was manifesting in five years. You know, it's like I wasn't a magician, but I was very proud of getting these results. But I couldn't get them without working with the business. So there are lots of positive examples of um, of growing a business by two hundred million in five years, helping to grow that. But also the uh, the half a million saving. You remember, I was twenty seven, new kid on the block quite fun for the role and uh you know seeing things happen so realizing you can impact the business was was a big a big thing belief so you can you have this belief now that you know if you do if you if you set out to do the right things and work at it, it you can make it happen that's that you know but also being humble and honest enough to things that aren't going well to to, to be real about it and uh there's nothing wrong with that you know it's success it's not always about success do you know what i mean you can't always have it and um but you can have integrity you know, and then and I'll always come back to virtues of humility and integrity and courage, you know, and uh, being at you learn from your mistakes and you're going to make them. Don't keep making them, do you know what I mean? But like, if you keep making the same ones at the same times, there's a problem. But, you know, fail your way up, as they say. But at least, at least um, forgive yourself as well. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you, you put that together really nicely because it shows those mistakes eventually will lead to your success because you're, if you're learning from them, you're less likely to make it again, which is great and so important, especially when you're younger as well. I mean, I know they say old habits die hard, particularly as we age, but I think there is always room for people to accept a mistake or accept a failure and have that self-awareness to adapt and to learn. Um, but moving on to your very busy schedule, what does motivate you to get up in the morning and how does somebody else find that motivation if they don't have it? You know, essentially I don't, I don't get up in the morning because I can't wait to get to work. I mean, I, I, what gets me up in the morning and I'm going to be honest is thankful that of where I'm at in life and uh, the excitement or the, uh, the notion that, something magical could happen that you don't expect you know and all the other things outside work that make me happy so you know i'm i wake up i, w I wake up you no know, feeling that today is out of my control and i think it's a very positive way to think is do what you can and whatever the results are if you put your effort into it you can do it and and that's my approach so i don't i don't have if things don't go to plan you can be disappointed with it so i I wake up with adventure, you know, things don't always, things rarely turn out how you think. And I've been able to sort of learn to try and live, it's a bit cliche again, live in the present a bit more, and stop, don't live in the future, as in what, what's going to, you know, you're preoccupied with that, the result or whatever. And carve away at the day, carve away at the, at the week. And um, 
what 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 really gets me up is the is the is the meeting and the connection with people you know even the journey to work sometimes you can have you know it, it can be revealing i mean uh, i love watching people you know and uh, just the dynamics around me and um you know i like the fact that my journey to work is a really in, well it's not that interesting actually it's it's interesting in the sense it's very quick because i work in a quite strange part of london it's like fulham but it's not really in fulham it's it's kind of in the middle of wandsworth parsons green imperial wharf however where i live near wilsden junction i can get there in four stops and i have this nice walk of about 20 minutes where i decompress and i like to sort of think what's going to happen today and uh, i like the chaos of what could happen that's what gets me up Again, my twin brother is the complete opposite, hates that, wants everything predetermined and predictable. And, uh, I don't have to be complete chaos, but I like the fact that I know that whatever my plan is today is, is not going to be uh, exactly what happens. And uh, I, like, I, like being, uh, I like being under pressure in a way. You know, I, I, don't, I always like it afterwards, but uh, I, I'm, the, I'm best when under pressure. But yeah, just the, just the magic of the day will be different and um, I don't live too far in the future. And uh, yeah. I love yeah. I love the people I work with. I'm, I'm very fortunate. That's lovely. Most of them, anyway. <laughs> I, do, I do. I like them all. I mean, everyone's different, but I. Uh, it is nice to. It's, it's it's really. I mean, with the pandemic, it was, you know, working from home was really, really, really nice for for a couple of months. You know, because you had flexibility and all the things. But I don't like it. Not for me, you know. Um, maybe one day a week but um and i think it, it was also a real leveler as well um going back to fashion and stuff or how loungewear all came in but i think people prioritized things as well quite differently and had you know refocus on what's important probably made some big decisions in their life but um yeah but you know i mean who would have predicted the pandemic so i get up happy to be alive and looking forward to uh the day that is out of my control <laughs> that's yeah. lovely i think i'm a bit more on your brother's side on that one. The really unpreparedness awesome. stresses me out. <laughs> oh no, he is he's very like that. My brother is uh he wasn't like that as a kid actually, but he uh he needs things all in order. He's he's very and you know, otherwise he just you know, he, he anxiety is 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 a very much part of him. Um bless him. Yeah, yeah. So um I think he thinks I'm too chilled, you know. I'm I'm a bit, I'm a bit too chilled, but <laughs> I'm all right with it, you know. <laughs> Feeding into that even more so, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, so moving us on quite nicely to uh, your current role, um, do you think that education and further learning is essential for someone who's maybe aspiring to a role similar to yours? And for those of us who wouldn't necessarily prescribe ourselves to be studious, what else would you suggest? Well, I, I think if you're going to do what I would call professional roles or technical roles, like, you know, if you want to be a doctor or you want to be an accountant or a lawyer, yeah, you, you have to study to a degree. I mean, you can't, if, if you're not into studying or, or you're not studious in that way, you probably are out of those realms. However, what I would say is, you know, you don't always have to go to university, for example, to achieve, you know, I, I know someone who is a... Uh, head of tax for example and, and they went they knew what they wanted to do so when they left school they went straight into it i mean all right that did involve studying but it wasn't the the uh, the usual sort of path of studying um but i think you need to find out what, i mean I, I think it was someone said you don't work a day in your life if you love what you do that's a very absolute thing to say you know i mean I, there's probably half a percent of people in the world who that applies to but you do have to find something you, you want to do. The worst thing, again, is to uh, is to get in, into something and you're 15 years down the line, 10 years down the line, you realise you don't like it. Right, you can always reskill and retrain, but focus on what you're good at and what you like. And if you stay in those lanes, you know, I mean, some of, some of the most successful entrepreneurs, they're not studious. They, don't, they haven't done studies. I, I would say for people who don't want to... Um, go down the studious route, be brave enough to be entrepreneurial if you've got that in you. And uh, I think if you've got that element, you go for it, you know, and, uh, you know, but I also think if you want to, um, you know, 
if you're good at plumbing or you're interested in that, get into that. Open up your own business, though. Do you know what I mean? Work for yourself or whatever. I mean, so if, if, if you're into the sort of more manual side of things or you want to be, you know, electrician, but, you know, maybe think about how the business can work for you. Because ultimately, if you, if you want to, if you want to do that, wouldn't it be great to be like, who's the guy for Pimlico Plumbers? Charlie something. I mean, he doesn't have to work a day in his life, but he started as a plumber and uh, he built a business and he's, you know, so, you know, I, I think that the, before you start talking about, before people go into, I don't study or do this, find out what you like to do because it will be fulfilling. You need to be fulfilled in what you do. You don't want to get to your mid-30s and your, mid, your early 40s hating what you've done for the last 15 years and thinking the next 15, 20 years is the same. So uh, that's what I would say. Um, but get the practical experience, you know, get into the get into the get into the roles, you know. You people that who are good at marketing or um you know, you, you all right, I'm not saying you don't have to study some marketing, but it's usually people who have a bit of a an idea about something, you know, or Oh, that could work you know people are apt with what's going on you know um, there's, there's so many examples out there so if you're not into that side of things look for role models maybe look them up on youtube whatever who how they got how they paved their way to success or to fulfill to fulfillment and you know i would also say don't always think success is having the title on the job if your life's miserable and you sacrifice everything for that that's not success you know success is a wholesome life where it's all ticking some nice seven out seven or eight out of ten boxes nine out of ten boxes you know it's not always ten out of ten like you see on the on social media with the whatever you know um yeah no well said definitely well said um but for let's say for a young buck somewhere out there who's watching this once it's up and live who would like to follow and be like shane is my idol i want to be like shane what advice would you give to someone who wants to follow in similar footsteps to your pro uh, professional path? I, I would say I would say you have to pursue the professional qualification route to, to do. I mean, I, I'm not saying you couldn't get there without it, but you know, really, you can't. So, uh, but invest in yourself. I mean, in, you can do it if you put the time into it. You know, I mean, if you don't want to be like me, if you're not interested in in numbers or or, or people or business, you know, if, so. If you're interested, I, my, what what makes me get up in the morning? I'm going to answer. Go back to it, is when I see when I develop people, when I see people who have come under me, who are now finance directors or operate chief operating officers, and it's because they've they've de not because they've developed under me, but I've allowed the you know I remember these people low self esteem, blah blah, and I look at them now because I like to f if, if I like to feel if they can look at me as, a, as an example of putting yourself not just up there but you know having having those levels of certainty that you can do it you know, people can do it so i would i would say invest in yourself because if you're not doing anything broaden your horizon somehow whether it's watching p inspirational people on youtube or you know some there's so much out there do you know what i mean you have no excuse really to not be inspired if you want to be yeah well said i do love that that's true but it's very true um, so a very subjective question to round us off. Um, how do you define success then? Oh, um, success, success for me is, is living life how you want to live it. And um, th there are no absolutes, but um, I think if you live a wholesome life where you have good friends, good, decent, good family, good relationships, a job you like doing and and you can have these by investing in yourself and playing the long game if you want everything on on tap it's it's gonna, it's not going to lead to anything fruitful it might do by luck you know but um success for me is not just about your job and your job title it's about doing what you want to do and making an, if you make an impact on people's lives that's success for me because that actually makes an impact on your life as well as fulfillment you know i mean when you uh if you're able to connect or to influence something very positive i believe something happens where it in like it empowers you it makes you feel good whatever all i think people want really people say i want a house i want a car a nice wife I want it. you want energy when you've got the energy you can you can accomplish anything
you know and energy that's inspired that's a bit inspirational energy which is really fine and i think you get that by helping other people it's a circuit again you know i think you become enriched by uh receiving for the uh not just for the self alone but f you you do things your motivation is not just for you it's for the it's for more of a collective thing i think i think that's success and the, the measure yeah. of it is how you feel inside you know yeah definitely and for some people that may be their family it may be their children maybe their friends it may even be their colleagues but i think like you said that it when it feels rewarding inside that's when you know which i love yeah. so you put that together perfectly yeah um, that's, that's that's how i would uh sum it up um yeah and uh, wonderful um so that pretty much summarizes our time and shane i'm so grateful to you for carving nice. up the time in your calendar no i'm honestly i'm so grateful for you to just make that time even though you had no idea who i was what i was doing and why i was doing it it's been such a pleasure having you on thank you so much shane have a wonderful day you too sim take care bye bye